My name is Lid Shaw, and this is my studio here at the Bonnaroo Festival. This is the Hay Bale Studio. This is our 11th year doing it, and we started this mm, 2005 was the first year we came down here to do it. Uh, the group that I was working with, Sean O'Connell and Music Allies, invited me to come down to Bonnaroo, and he said, can you come down and actually bring a real studio down to the Bonnaroo Festival? The Bonnaroo Festival is, we are out, we're about an hour south of Nashville, and this is the middle of a huge farm field. It's just a huge field out here, and there are 80,000 people, 80,000 audience, about 100,000 with all the staff and everything. So we're out in the middle of nowhere. Studio where you've got everything that you want for a real recording studio. This area that we're in is back behind the stages. So right over there, there is a huge stage called the Witch Stage. And right over there, a few hundred yards away, is a huge stage called the What Stage. But they do that to confuse you and keep you on your toes, right? So these giant stages have these huge sound systems. And it's just loud, thumping bass and music going on right here in this whole area uh, every year. How do you soundproof this from all that activity outside in this backstage area? Because it really gets cooking. And so Sean, the very first year, he had been down here and he was coming to scope out the site, see what it all looked like. And he was driving around, saw all these farms around here. And there was some farmer nearby who had all these bales of hay. And so he had this light bulb went off and he came to me and he said, you know, do you think we could use the bales of hay somehow to help with the soundproofing of the studio? And of course, I was like, yeah, that would be awesome. You know, that's perfect. Perfect sound insulator. So what we decided to do is we come and we park the trailer here, and then we bring in hundreds of bales of hay, and they go all the way around the trailer. And I don't really know if they're on the roof, too. Maybe not on the roof, but uh, they go right up above the sides, and we get this huge soundproofing you know, around the trailer. So it's great. And when you look at the outside, you just see um, a giant bale of hay with a couple of doors coming out, you know. All of a sudden the door opens and all this, this band pours out and everything. Very beginning when we did this, it was just a pretty simple operation, you know. It was like two of us and we, uh, we just brought down a couple of, you know, small tiny mixer or something. And then we just grew this over years and um, we started bringing in more bands. So at first it would be of uh, three days worth of bands and then we started recording on Thursday night and then finally now it's like you know we record all Thursday, all Friday, all Saturday, all Sunday and our goal is to do a band an hour. So it's a band an hour all day long and if we really hit our mark we've got 40 bands in four days so it's you know it's over a hundred songs. One of the really cool things about Bonnaroo is that it's an incredibly esoteric and wide and varied musical festival. So we'll, in the festival, we'll have everything from, you know, all night DJs like Dead Mouse and, and uh, Skrillex to, um, you know, Kanye West comes and does a hip hop show to rock bands, to bluegrass bands, to all sorts of stuff. And that also is reflected in the studio here. So this time around, we would have a band like the Punch Brothers come in, and they just came in near the end. And uh, you know, the mix that I'm doing is just two microphones and a bass microphone, and it's just got a real clean purity to it. And then we'll have a band like Sylvanesso come in, and it's a DJ bringing in a rig and, and he's doing electronic music and I'm getting that to just sound like it's slamming in the mix and then her, um, she has a vocal mic and, and we're just getting like a cool, compressed, delayed, trippy, reverbed out vocal sound that goes right perfectly with the DJ stuff. And then we had um, a band like Strand of Oaks, which is a rock band. They came in and it's just heavy guitars and rock drums and just getting really punchy mixes on the drums. You know, the, the uh, classic quad compressor here is like the perfect, perfect addition for that, getting that glue that makes the rock track sound so awesome. 
We had Ben Folds in this time. So this time he also brought in his orchestra. So he's got a three-piece string section, and then he's got a three-piece horns and woodwind section and percussion, and he's playing piano and singing, and it's just this incredible like flurry of orchestral music. So it was perfect. You know, we were able to just like find homes for everything and easily keep track of it and mix it and get a really quick, fast, great sound. I said that we do a band an hour. So what that means is typically when we're recording a session here at the Haybell Studios, the band is, they arrive right at the top of the hour. You know, we got a band at noon, a band at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. And they spill in here and then I'll immediately go out and greet them, find out what the lowdown is for what they want to do. They take a look around the studio, they see the drum set, they see the guitar amps and stuff and they're like, oh man, you know, cool, cool amps, you know, old tube amps. So they kind of figure out what they want to use and, um, and just come up with a plan, you know, do something a little different from what they would do on stage or the way they might have done their record. Sound check them in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We get them all mic'd up and sound checked and ready to go. And then usually the second half hour is the band performing three songs. And so when the band is all mic'd up and ready to go, I'm mixing right here in a pair of headphones through the AWS, the SSL console, and I just literally mix it in headphones while they're performing. I don't really know anything about the bands. It's kind of an advantage. I sort of have this um, innocence about what their music is or what their record might be before they come in, and so we can really just approach it um, in the moment. The band is hearing the same mix that I'm creating in on the console, you know, in the headphones in here. And so when they're performing to me, I'm responding to it and I'm performing the mix back to them. So we have this dialogue going, you know, it's, it's a conversation between myself working the mix in here and the band out there working their music and showing me what their music is all about. It's the little magic that happens in real time that never happens again. <laughs> becomes sort of inspired by the festival and all the music that's going on here and the 100,000 people out there having a great party. When we first started out, we just had simple consoles. You know, we might have had something small in here. Um, we had to, we we're very limited in what, what we could do, how we could accommodate bands. Um, the sound was limited too. You know, it was a little harder to get a really hi-fi sound. And then we brought the AWS console down the first time, and I think it was the um, 924 was the first one we brought down. And then after that, it evolved to the 948 and the 948 Plus, um, which is what we have now here. This console does incredible stuff. I mean, this is like having a rocket ship in the studio. The sound, the sonic tone of it, and the flexibility and the fact that I can mix on it in real time. Because I've tried this with other mixers, and I've tried to emulate this by mixing in the computer somehow, somehow and it's just not even possible. I cannot get remotely anywhere close to it, to the same capability as I can do mixing on the console now. The sound is awesome. It's so clean in a good way, and it has, it has character, it's got punch, it's got attack to it. The detail is incredible, you know, it's so quiet. Um, for me, a lot of times the challenge is, you know, keeping everything else quiet to match how good the console sounds. So one of the things that's really cool about it is that it's so flexible. I can easily route stuff, I've got, I use all 24 faders down here, and we come in, we do sort of a, we, we definitely use it in a little bit of an unusual way, but it's a way that I would highly recommend anybody use it. It's really awesome. So using the bus routing on here, the eight different buses, I can send stuff to parallel compression in real time and then bring those back on our stereo returns over here. So that gives me the same elements that I might want in a, you know, a typical brick and mortar studio, that kind of capability mixing a record, I can just do that right here, mixing in real time. Some of the stuff I do is probably pretty standard, so I, I like to have a mono delay coming back because that just sounds killer in the music, you know? And uh, it's easy for me to get that stuff in time with the music they're doing. 
And I've got an awesome spring reverb that I like to use. I've got this old master room spring reverb, the, uh, what is it, the XL121. It's just a super cool old school spring reverb that sounds great, you know. And one of my favorite tricks is for doing the delays on the console. This right here looks like a sustain pedal because that's what it is. And what I've got is I've got this plugged in to the tap tempo setting on the delay unit, which is up here in the rack. And while I'm listening to a band start out their song, as soon as they count off, I'm already in time with the music. So I can get delays that are in time in sync with the band. And one of my favorite things, I bring that back right here on its own fader so that I can really work it into the mix. And then I actually use the um, aug send here that's on the console to feed it back to itself. So that's how I can get like multiple delays on the, uh, on the delay, on the echo. When I first <coughs> hook up the delay and I want to get it to do a runaway delay and really get trippy, you know, we're at Bonnaroo, so there's a lot of psychedelic rock, you know. So if I really want to have fun with it and get it, let it kind of go crazy on me, um, it's possible by just feeding it back to the delay, but it gets louder and louder and louder, so that gets tricky to manage it. So all we do to manage that and make it sound totally awesome, so we take the built-in dynamics that come with the console, and we just assign it over to the delay return, which is assigned right here. So this, this first compressor, we insert it on that channel. Now, if I go nuts with this, it just compresses it. It keeps it like nice and compact, and it gives it like an analog delay kind of quality, you know? So that's an awesome trick for this. And I was able to use that on bands in the middle of their performances. You know, I have like, they're doing delay trippy guitars, and I'm mixing in delays that are tripping out in the middle of the whole mix, and, and they really love it. You know, they respond to it. It's fun. Obviously, I'm not, you know, one Superman doing all this stuff myself. I've got an amazing crew here, an amazing team of engineers. Uh, Michael Hardesty is head engineer for the studio for me here at the Haybell. So I work closely with him. Um, we have Stephen Turney here this year, too, and Seiji Inoue. Joe Hutchinson, who's here, and he's mastering all the audio that we're mixing in real time. So he's actually mastering up to 100 songs in four days powerful, powerful stuff. And then we've also brought Tyler Schaefer with us this year as an intern. He's, he's managing all of our social media and sort of keeping the whole story going. Working with all these guys means that when the band comes in, you know, we've got a flurry of people running around and we're setting up microphones and headphones for everybody. And I'll come in and, and Michael Hardesty, AKA Megahertz, and he's setting levels, you know, and we're shouting back and forth, making sure we, we got everybody um, patched in properly. And I'll come in and he'll have levels and it's kind of a, we've got a, a whole groove going now where I walk in the door and he just takes off his hand, headphones and he just like hands me a pair of headphones. I get to just like step into place and start mixing. So, you know, I get to act like a rock star a little bit. Nothing that I'm doing is going to tape or to Pro Tools or getting digital or anything. It's just analog live signal through the microphones, through the wires, through the console, through the outboard gear, straight down. And then at the mastering is where Joe captures it into the computer. That's the point at which it gets grabbed. And it has just, there's a sound quality and purity to that sound when it goes, you know, through the console just as analog signal and then gets captured that. I'll be damned if I could ever figure out another way to recreate that, you know. It, that. it needs that pure, original sound. So when Joe masters it, so he, he records the audio, the two mixes, and then in right away, as soon as we're done doing it, we'll record three songs and he'll capture them. Then he'll master them on the spot, and within an hour, he's done mastering those songs, and they're uploaded to an FTP server, which 40 radio stations and markets around the country have access to. So immediately, the music that we're recording, it's not real time, but it's almost real time, you know, it's within an hour. Um, that stuff is accessible and it's getting aired on radio stations around the country. So it's, really, it's a really cool way to bring people in to Bonnaroo from somewhere afar. Some years we also bring in a full video crew and shoot live video of the bands. 
and we have a whole series of these amazing performances on video that you can see if you go to thehaybalestudio.com and that'll take you right to my website where we have you know dedicated to the hay bale studio we've got all the youtube videos of different performances so go check that out it's awesome i love my aws man it's awesome it, it is so cool is it mine i didn't know it was mine but it seems like the same one every year. I think it's got the tape on it sometimes, right? Sometimes. Yeah, so we're pretty old school about it. I mean, as you can see, we, we get, you know, we put a piece of tape down and get out a Sharpie, and it's, yeah. you know, we just write down what we want to. And that's what I love about this board, is it's like you can get really intense and uh, fancy with it in the computer. You know, it interfaces with Pro Tools if you want it to. But man, if you just want to run mics through it, and if you just want a mixer that is a workhorse that sounds killer and, and works when you need it to, it works great for that.